Good morning students. Welcome back to biology class. In the previous class, we discussed about the various biotic components and how each living being gets food. In nature, some animals eat plants, whereas some eat other animals. The feeding habits of animals link them with each other and form a chain called the food chain. Following video will help you in understanding the food chain. Did you ever wonder why we use the term food chain? We all know what a chain is, right? This is a chain. It has metal hoops that are connected or linked together. The more hoops you add, the longer the chain gets. So, what's a food chain? Is it metal links that connect food together? No, a food chain isn't an actual chain. It doesn't really connect a living thing to its food. Since we all know how a chain works, the term food chain just helps us imagine the connections between the living things and their energy sources. Food. For instance, grass gets its energy from the sun, and then a grasshopper eats the grass to get its energy. Then a frog eats the grasshopper. The arrows show where the energy came from and where it's going. That's a food chain. And look, see how similar it is to an actual chain? So children, I hope you have understood what is a food chain. It is a sequence which shows how living things in an environment are related to each other according to their feeding habits. Or in short, we can say food chain is a series of organisms, each dependent on the next as a source of food. Look at the three food chains given in the slide. You will note that link follows a sequence. All food chains begin with plants, as plants can make their own food by photosynthesis. Animals eat plants, or other animals. It gives us an idea about the transfer of food energies from the herbivorous animals to the carnivorous animals. A simple food chain can also be given as producers to the primary consumers, to the secondary consumers, and then to the tertiary consumers, which further lead to predators and decomposers. The arrows in a food chain show the unidirectional flow of energy in the form of food. Food chains and food web form an integral part of every ecosystem. Following video will show you what is a food web. Well, now we know why we call them food chains, but what about food webs? This looks like a good food web, right? Hmm. No, I don't think so. A food web isn't an actual web like a spider makes. Just like the food chain, the term food web gives us an idea about the connections between living things and their energy sources, their food. Think about a spider web and how so many parts of it connect and crisscross with the other parts of it. That's how a food web works. Let's look at an example. We can start with our food chain from before. More plants than just grass get energy from the sun, and more animals than just the grasshopper eat grass for energy. And the grasshopper eats more than just grass. Of course, a frog eats more than just grasshoppers. And so on. And so on. And now you can see why it's called a web. As you have seen in the video, each living organism in the ecosystem is a part of multiple food chains. For instance, a rat and deer and many more are herbivores. Similarly, different herbivores can be eaten by different carnivores. Thus, we see that there are a lot of food chains that prevail in an ecosystem, which are interconnecting, overlapping and interdependent in nature. Hence, we describe food web as a network of food chains that are linked together at various trophic levels so as to form a number of 
feeding connections amongst different organisms of biotic community so children i hope you have understood how the various communities of organisms in an ecosystem feed on each other to survive thank you